Yeah, he really just wants to die. Got and it. He's he's pretty upset that no one can kill him. <laughs> oh, one day, buddy. Yeah, keep at it, man. <laughs>
So going from a very wide open area to something very claustrophobic. Miles is going into a little bit of a descent into madness here, as you'll see in a moment. Hang in there, Miles. Definitely off the beaten path. There's kind of this ominous looking glow down there and you can see something who, breathing what? heavily. No. <laughs> Do it, Miles. Don't be afraid. Hello, ah! excuse me. Oh. <laughs> excuse me, sir. <laughs> so oh. as you can see, this oh enemy God. is known as the Headless. Yeah. And he is referred to as an apparition type enemy. Okay. And you'll see a few things that are happening right now. First and foremost, he has this bar that's building up on the bottom of the screen, mm. and that is a status effect that's called terror. Terror. <laughs> and <laughs> no. when you fight an apparition-type enemy, it doesn't matter if you block or attack, you're going to take tear status oh effect damage. Oh. And when it increases to its maximum... Oh, my God. He's <laughs> just right there. <laughs> yeah, this one, this one's a little bit tricky. So you will, uh, if your your status bar fills up in its entirety, mm -hmm. you will take significantly more damage. It actually oh, no. feels like you die instantaneously Ooh. when it happens. You're just so scared. Yep, <laughs> and then not only that, this black aura that surrounds this enemy slows your movements and doesn't allow you to react as quickly. It's like a nightmare, oh. basically. It is. Like, it is a little bit of a nightmare. Uh, that, that was crazy. When he disappeared and reappeared, there was no flourish or like you know it just cup of smoke. It just happened. Like nope, you have to you have to learn this enemy's attack pattern and figure out how to approach the fight. Oh my goodness! So what's particularly interesting about this enemy too is he has this unique tempo and rhythm to when you fight him. He's got these slow sweeping movements that are kind of difficult to get a sense of. Okay. And when you fight a lot of different enemies in the game, well, there's, a, there's a rhythm to it. There's like a there's a beat that you can feel, like a one, two, yeah. three. And then they'll try to throw you off by moving back and forth between what those patterns are. This one's a little bit different because he's slow and sweeping, and he really plays against the slow movement because of the fog. Oh, man. So, yeah, he's got a totally different rhythm. Um, that he might be used to at this point. Exactly. And right when he's winding up a, a big swing, he just straight up disappears, which offsets the rhythm too. Um, and but you know, Miles is doing doing his best Great here. Job. Uh, the headless still has quite a bit of health left. Miles, why don't you show these guys how the wolf likes to party? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh boy. You guys went to college with the wolf too. Divine <laughs> confetti. <laughs> so he throws out some divine confetti and as you can see his sword now has oh. this ominous purple glow to it it's like the same and glow almost wow, wow. yeah it's the same glow as the apparition enemy okay. has on his weapon and now this is going to allow him to do significantly more damage all right so we've jumped to a new area the sempo temple um which is a brand new look uh at, at a new area in sekiro yes the sempo temple is a little bit further into the game mm -hmm. and at this point sekiro or the wolf, as he's known, is in the process of trying to find a specific item okay. that's going to help him take on some of the stronger foes in the game. Nice. Man, look at these vistas. This is one of my favorite areas in the game. Yeah. It, it's I was going to say, every single area that we've gone to, you know, even when it's very dreary and you know cold and there are signs telling you to please turn back, uh, it's just beautiful in how everything is lit, how everything sort of moves and feels so natural. Yeah, it feels it really feels alive, yeah. um, especially when you can see the, the, the wind moving and the wind flowing, and then you can run around and you can encounter characters that you can speak to, mm -hmm. and there's all these really cool details in the environment that help tell a story of the area that you're in. There's just something about seeing like a horizon in an area like this in a From Software game specifically because generally they're, they feel so deliberate. And more often than not, you see a really interesting area in the distance. Like, I think I can actually get there. Um, and it's just really enticing. Yes, and oftentimes you'll see all this stuff in the distance like you just mentioned, mm -hmm. and you will be able to go to that just, just by virtue of how the world kind of wraps back and forth in on itself. Before you realize that you're looking down on the area that you first saw it, and it's just, yeah, it makes it feel so cohesive. Exactly. Now, the Senpo Temple is full of these enemies that are... I want to call it, they're, they're not the corrupted monk, but they're monks that have been corrupted and tainted in their pursuit of immortality. So these guys, for all intents and purposes, are pretty evil, and they've essentially gone mad with power by experimenting with immortality. Oh, no. And one thing that you'll see is a lot of them actually are martial arts experts. They're not using weapons, but they're exceedingly fast and dangerous. They still know how to, uh, to, to handle, handle a man with a blade. Yes. 
I got some cash there. Nice. Ooh. I wish that happened in real life. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so this guy's got a staff. Got a staff, yeah. Now, if you wanted to get all that cash in real life, though, I mean, you'd have to run around and randomly kill people, I And think. that's tough, yeah. That's especially when they're uh, seeking immortality. Yes. So, so the moral dilemma, right? That's right. <laughs> And while you're being stealthy, you can also, I noticed earlier, you can eavesdrop on people and sort of learn a couple clues about where you're going, where you're heading, who you're fighting. Yes, eavesdrop Eavesdrop is one of the, the core stealth mechanics, and it's also kind of a, a narrative mechanic in the game. And the way that it works is you can engage with these enemies that don't know that you're there, mm. and you can listen into what they're doing. Sometimes they'll kind of subtly point you in the right direction. Sometimes they'll tell you uh, where an item might be hiding, mm. or they might give you a hint about the game world. So these idols allow you to, to rest and sort of fast travel once you've discovered them? Yes. So the Sculptor's Idols will serve as the game's main fast travel system, mm -hmm. and they'll also serve as a, a focal point for where you can do a variety of different actions. So purchase spirit emblems. You'll be able to uh, upgrade your skills. And this gives us an opportunity to talk through this a little bit. Yeah. So you can see that number eight there that shows you how many skill points you have available. Got and it. in the top left you have multiple different skill trees. The first one is Shinobi Arts, second one is Prosthetic Arts, and the last one is the Ashina Arts. Mm. And each one kind of has a specific focus, mm -hmm. and not necessarily a strength, but they're thematic in some capacity. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the first tree, and a skill that I always recommend that people get right off the bat is called Mikiri. And this is an ability where an enemy will thrust at you and you can actually step on their blade oh. and mm -hmm. perform significant posture damage and sometimes an immediate death blow assassination. I literally can't play the game without this ability. At this oh, point. Wow. It sounds so satisfying. It is, and it's, it's particularly cool because your muscle memory and the way that you train yourself to play this it challenges that because it wants you to dodge into an enemy's attack versus away mm, from it. Yeah. And it rewards you for being really aggressive. Yeah, because your first instinct is just like, whoa, let me get out of there. Uh, but this tells you to know, like push forward. And yes. Attack. Exactly. You can Ooh. see as soon as you hop in yeah, here, there's this whole tree. Yeah, and the way that the tree works is you have to get some of these prerequisite tools mm -hmm. and upgrade them before the next tier is going mm -hmm. to it's unlock. available, of course. Yeah, and in the, be in, in the introductory to the tree, you have the shuriken, and the first enhancement here is that it can be imbued with rotational energy. So mm -hmm. essentially what this does is it just makes the shuriken stronger mm -hmm. and can sometimes cut through armor. Oh, nice. nice. And you'll have to be able to upgrade that before you can move into the next stage with the loaded spear prosthetic tool. Then it starts to branch from here, and there's some more customization options based on how you like to play. Um, so, yeah, what's happening with, the, with this first fork here? What, are, what do you get to choose from? On this first one, assuming that you've unlocked, or uh, assuming you've found the loaded spear in, in, in the game world at some point in time, mm -hmm. you can upgrade this one to um, allow for longer range thrust attacks. So a small enemy struck through the attack can be dragged towards the wielder and can even remove crude armor from foes. So you'll occasionally find these enemies that have this this unwieldy looking armor and you can thrust the spear into them, pull it off, oh, nice. and then make them more susceptible to being attacked. And then you can see it goes deeper and deeper and deeper into each tier. And then by the time you get to the end of it, you're unlocking prosthetic tools that are exceedingly powerful. Nice. And oftentimes imbued with some sort of elemental attack too. Okay, gotcha. And so you'll encounter enemies, uh, presumably that are, are weak to various elements. And so you can kind of um, tune your, your loadout to match that. Exactly. Awesome. Yep. And then you can also see that there's lock icons on here. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind that is he doesn't know what this tool is. He hasn't found it yet. And by virtue of not finding it, you have no idea what it is, what it's going to unlock, or what requires, mm -hmm. what materials are required to be able to get it. So maybe a little bit of eavesdropping in certain yes. situations might give you a, a hint. Exploration exactly. is worthwhile here. Yeah. Yep. E exploration will be rewarded. Same thing with killing enemies. You get player experience. Mm -hmm. You will get materials to be able to upgrade your prosthetic tools. And some of these prosthetic tool upgrades are a difference maker in boss fights and many, many other counters. Awesome. So it seems like just a critical thing to dive deep into and, and focus on in addition to sort of the skills we were seeing, like Makiri and et cetera. So. Yes. And if you so choose, this is a game that you can run through and you can just use sword on sword but Ooh. you'll have a lot more fun and a lot more interesting encounters if you pull out the prosthetic Absolutely. tools and start mixing and matching.
So only only the, the purest of masochists should apply to uh, ignoring all the upgrade systems. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's going to be the I guess the the, the underwear speed run yeah. version of this <laughs> game, the no prosthetic tool run. I just play the game in my underwear. All right, so we are now within the flaming Harada estate. Um, Andrew, can you set up kind of where we're at within Sekiro? Yes, so right now the wolf is experiencing a past memory. This is mm -hmm. something that happened three years prior to the events of the main game, mm -hmm. and he's now back trying to understand what's going on with the Harada state, why it's burning down, and why it's been invaded by this group of bandits. Got it. And Miles is going to run us through a combat scenario on the other side of this pond to the left with a particularly dangerous enemy that we've sampled before. Yeah, I was going to say, with it being a flashback, I'm, I'm noticing that the enemy types are seemingly more human, um, at least what I've seen so far. Those, those guys look like, you know, normal warriors. Yep, they're just your normal run-of-the-mill bandits, and they're trying to pillage this state right now. And our job is to get to a key character that's at the end of the stage, but there's no way that we're going to be able to do that without first getting past this gigantic man sitting on the stairs. Oh, man. I love the ash, like in the wind. But we wanted to talk through a little bit of a way to approach a specific combat scenario like this because this, this one is particularly dangerous. There's a lot of enemies here. Mm -hmm. It is very, very easy to get surrounded. And what we want to do is combine a few different approaches. So Miles is going to run off to the side here, and he's going to stealth in and try to thin the herd out a little bit. Yeah, these strategy tips are going to be very, very useful come March 22nd. <laughs> Yeah, I love that, that you have that option, too, that you can, you know, you can start it off stealthily, and if you're like me and you, you fully intend to do, be stealthy, but you you inevitably blow it after, like, your second <laughs> attempt, and then when, you know, everything hits the fan, you can actually just kind of get in there and um, and just hack and slash. Yeah, exactly, and he wasn't he was super stealthy coming in there, but thankly, thankfully he was far enough away from these enemies that he didn't alert the rest of the group. Got it. Because had he done that, he would be in pretty big trouble right now. A world of hurt. A world of hurt. All right, so we got to move around this guy. Yeah, the last time we were together, we saw these enemies with the shield, and they're really, really difficult to fight if you don't have the axe. Mm -hmm. But as long as he's able to stealth kill one of them and get rid of them, it'll make it a little bit easier. Okay. Oh. Right, row. He had good instincts. Oh, no. He's in trouble now. <laughs> oh, I believe in you, Miles. There we go. Maya. <laughs> oh, taking out the ranged enemies first. All right, so Smart. our strategy has shifted. <laughs> our strategy has shifted to an all-out melee. But what he can oh, do look here... Oh, at the guy. He's, <laughs> so, <laughs> he's so angry. Juzo, the drunker. He's, he's very angry and very drunk. Yeah, bad combo. Bad it combo. It really is. And he's still going to try to get rid of some of these guys because yeah. taking them all off. Taking them all on simultaneously when Juzo's there is it's a frozen. He's going to have extreme difficulty being able to beat him. Here he comes! Oop. But if he can somehow get away, he might actually be able to get a little bit of a helping hand from a character who's just kind of hanging out nearby. Got it. Peppering some shurikens in there as well, I see. Do we have some, some range abilities too? Yes. Okay. So the shuriken that he has attached right now mm -hmm. will be able to close the gap if he combines it with a oh. sword attack. Nice. Or he can whittle away some of the damage on these lesser enemies. Oh Dang. man, that did a lot of damage. Just one big headbutt. But now he's even the playing field a little bit. And, and he can go talk to our friend who's watching off to the side. Hello, kind sir. Please uh, help. Yeah. <laughs> you see this, uh, I have a problem here. Can you please help me? Oh no, never mind. What a nice gentleman. Yeah, right? Right in the nick of time. Right in the nick of time, just when we needed him. So now we're really going to put Miles' skills to the test, and hopefully this kindly samurai gentleman can give him a hand. Take a few slashes at that exposed back hair there. Yeah. <laughs> I love just seeing these different enemy types, though, how they're, they're dressed differently, they attack so differently. His back hair is definitely his weak point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he gotcha. Well, 
I think that was a pretty good look at a really difficult boss battle to come, but I mean, it seems also, you know, fair. Like you can clear out the enemies um, to try to even the playing field mm -hmm. and, and approach it that way. So um, perseverance will pay off, I believe. Against yes. The drunkard. And it's a conscious decision that you can make to engage with this other samurai to help you out, or you can try to take on the drunkard one-on-one. -on -one. Excellent. So you can try your hand against the drunkard on March 22nd when Sekiro Shadow dies twice releases on PlayStation 4. Um, Andrew, Kristen, thank you so much for, for joining us today on PlayStation Underground. Miles, thanks for driving us. Yeah, thank you so much. PlayStation.